Welcome. I'm Dr. Len Saputo, and I'm here with Dr. Robert Rowan. Dr. Rowan is a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Johns Hopkins University, a graduate of the University of California in San Francisco Medical Center, is known as the father of medical freedom in the state of Alaska, and is a past president of the Internet, International Oxidative Medicine Association. Pleasure to have you here, Dr. Rowan. Thank you, Len. We have an issue today with Ebola. Dr. Rowan has found a cure for it. It's not being widely accepted uh, in, in anywhere in international uh, medicine, which is, is a real shame. We're going to start this out by talking a little bit about what Ebola is and then something about oxidative medicine. So what is this Ebola infection and why is it so important today? Ebola is what's called a phylovirus, <clears throat> small virus that houses just a little bit of genetic material. Um, but all viruses have a need to get into the cell. They can do nothing on their own. Bacteria can. Viruses have to get into the cell. Okay. Ebola is no different than many other viruses. It's got a lipid envelope, which means fats, and it's got proteins on it that stick down like these fingers, and it attaches to your cell. And it's, they're called sulfhydryl groups for the technically inclined. But without the sulfhydryl groups, they can't attach to your cell. If they can't attach to the cell, they can't get in the door. Okay, so when you have this infection, what does it do to you, and why is it so serious? Well, Ebola works, first of all, by hijacking your immune system. The first things it does is it fools the immune system to think it's not there, and then it explodes all over the body. So by the time your immune system knows it's there, there's billions and billions of virus particles out there and it's too late to do anything. So the immune system comes out with machine guns and tanks and bazookas going brrrr, And not only is it getting the virus, it gets you too. Because it inflames your body. There's this thing called cytokine storm? Yes. Okay. It's sort of like you're trying to get the terrorists out of a bunker over there and instead of using a, a particular target, a drone, you take... A blockbuster bomb, and you take the whole city out. And you're too. in it, too. Yes. Okay, and now, and, and it's a fairly lethal disease. It's incredibly lethal, uh, anywhere between 20% in certain outbreaks to 50-plus percent in the current outbreak. Okay, and now you have a treatment that you've invented or that you know about and have, have built that's effective in treating this disease. <coughs> Yeah, I didn't invent this. This treatment's been around for over 100 years. Actually, the inventor of, of the device is Nikola Tesla, who invented a commercial ozone generator. However, this has been in use for scores of years. I've been doing it since 1986, and I teamed up with a fellow named Dr. Howard Robbins from Manhattan, who developed a process called uh, an improved process of direct intravenous gas, where you take some gas um, about this much volume of gas, and you inject it directly in the vein. And it is basically 100% safe. And I say that unequivocally, 100% safe. Um, it is extraordinarily effective at modulating the immune system and doing everything you want it to do for an Ebola attack. Because Ebola, remember I said, it hijacks the immune system. What we're trying to do here is modulate the immune system and get it back. Ebola also damages oxygen delivery and, and your um, circulation because of the immune attack on the virus. It's blowing holes in your circulation. Ozone has a five-fold effect. It improves red blood cell flexibility, meaning the cells can get through damaged vessels. It improves the oxygen delivery of the red cell. And remember, we die from oxygen starvation. When you mm. have an infection, it's oxygen your body wants. You have a, what's called a respiratory burst of 100 times oxygen consumption to fight an infection. So ozone delivers more oxygen, gets better circulation, it modulates the immune system so that if your immune system is like this, it brings it into parity. So if it's too high, it brings exactly. it down. If it's too low, it builds it up. And for Ebola in particular, but basically all viruses in particular, those sulfhydryl groups, the fingers that I told you, ozone oxidizes them on contact instantly to water. So they can't grab anymore. Exactly. And they can't get in the cell. Exactly. Okay, so you've told us about the infection. You've told us about what you think is the cure. Now, you've got an invitation to go to Sierra, Le Sierra Leone, which you took, 
And what happened when you went there? We got an invitation from the president of Sierra Leone to use ozone therapy or to bring it and teach it there, which we did. And we taught a large number of doctors, who many of whom were very skeptical at first, and then all of them fell into line when they saw the science and they lined up to get it. And unfortunately, on the last, the next to the last day I was there, when we actually made it to the Ebola Center, a call come in, came in from the Ministry of Health, which was conspicuously absent during all the teachings, all the trainings. They weren't there. And a call came in halting the treatment of ozone for Ebola, and I just lost it. Wait I screamed. a minute. You're telling me that the doctors thought this was a great thing, and they were embracing it, and the director of, of health thought that they were going to stop this for some reason that is still hard to understand. We, we don't really know for sure, but I always tell people to follow the money trail. Mm. You can't patent ozone. Mm -hmm. And I went on national television to discuss this with the people of Sierra Leone, and these health ministers were more interested in the hundreds of millions of dollars they were going to get to bury bodies, to incinerate bodies, than to save the lives of the infected. And this was on national television? Yes. And still no response? S yes. And even to this day, what's going on in Sierra Leone, in my opinion, is tragic, because if you're tested positive, they will throw you into a center. And one doctor did test positive. He ba I trained this doctor. Mm. Um, he begged for ozone therapy, and they wouldn't give it to him. And then he got worse. He went into kidney failure. They transferred him to a dialysis center, and he ended up dying. Oh, my goodness. In the meantime, now, now the method we're using is direct intravenous gas, and this was, this was pioneered by Dr. Howard Robbins of New York, plus additions that I brought in, too, called the Rowan's, Rowan Robbins Protocol for Ebola. So they, since that time, they have lost two key world-famous doctors since that time. They've lost a total of nine, excuse me, 10 to 11 doctors, almost 100% kill rate in their doctors wow. until two doctors that we've treated recently. One that we trained, a fellow named Kana, actually wouldn't get tested because if he knew he had gotten tested, he'd be hauled away and then likely denied treatment. So he took the treatment himself, and in 48 hours, all of his symptoms were gone. So you suspect strongly that this was Ebola, and it probably was. He jabbed himself with a needle, yeah, an okay. Ebola needle. For, and oh, two gee. to three days later, he got classic symptoms. It was a classic case. All right, that's one patient. What about the second one? The second case was a military doctor named Captain Mibrira, a physician. <laughs> got Ebola. Our team got to him, and this is after one of the deaths of a key doctor. Wow. He agreed to get ozone. He got ozone, and within 48 hours, all of his symptoms are gone, too. Wow, so this man was cured, and you knew he had he Ebola. Was, he was cured, and he was tested positive, and he was cured, and the, and, and the government announced that he was healed, but they didn't say how or why. Why? Why aren't they acknowledging that he received ozone and was cured? To me, this would make uh, the Ministry of Health, if they accepted this, looked like world heroes, that they were able to conquer Ebola. That's amazing. It makes you wonder what's going on. It also makes you wonder why the National Institutes of Health isn't doing something about inviting you to do some research on this particular cure. Len, can you name me a non- patented synthetic petrochemical drug that cures any disease? Nothing besides antibiotics. It doesn't exist. You can't That's patent right. ozone. There's no money to be made on this because the treatment is 100% safe. Mm. We've, we've, everybody who has received it there, I understand, for whatever reason, whether Ebola test positive or just fever and symptoms, they're all better. Mm. Everyone. There, there has been no one lost so far to any form of ozone treatment. Well, it makes you wonder because... We know that the National Institutes of Health generally doesn't fund for complementary and alternative therapies. Even though there's a, there is a center for a complementary and alternative medicine, not much money goes there. And I think you're right, Dr. Rowan. It's because there's a trail of money that needs to be followed. And if it's something that Big Pharma wants to support, usually there is a lot of study that's done and it's accepted to do research. Has that happened in Im Sierra Leone? Imagine if you had a cure for infectious diseases from malaria, mm. inclusive of malaria, to Ebola, to bacteria, 
that could cure people for as little as 5 to $10. Wow, I could see how that could be an economic issue. Yes. It could cause actually an economic collapse of, of the U.S., of not the, just of the pharmaceutical industry, because it's $2.8 trillion budget now. So maybe there's a lot more to the story than meets the eye, but we're not here to just discuss that. No. So you've literally found something that works to cure this disease. Not that I found it. I applied something Whatever. that I know. Whatever. Yeah. You, and you had, he went to Sierra Leone at the invitation of the government to do it and then was, was ostracized at the end. This is something that's certainly not scientific, and it has to have other roots. So I want to thank you very much for agreeing to share your story and hope that maybe somebody someplace will have the courage to take it a little further and support the research that needs to be done, even though we know right now that this is really a safe, effective uh, treatment that doesn't cost much. So they can see, read the whole story on my Facebook page, Dr. Robert J. Rowan. Okay. And I also have videos of patients we treated in Sierra Leone with ozone for other reasons posted on my YouTube channel, okay. which is Robert Rowan, R-O-W-E-N-M-D, all one word. Excellent. Plus, we just finished a one-hour video talking about the details of this that we'll link to for those who would like to listen to it. Thanks again, Dr. Rowe. Thank you.